Thank you very much, Commissioner uh, Potocnik, uh, not only for delivering this speech, but also for your um, well, your work within the Commission to put this issue uh, much higher on the political agenda. And thank you for all for uh, attending in such large numbers this very important uh, conference, although most of the work will start afterwards, as we know. Um, me, myself, I, I started to get really interested in um, the problem of wildlife crime <coughs> roughly two years ago, when I was confronted by a figure from the Kruger National Park in South Africa, that in 2011, 448 rhino were poached, were killed. And that figure alone didn't tell me a lot, but I got really alarmed when I noticed that only four years before that, in 2007, the number was 13. So within four years, the amount of uh, rhino killed went up from 13 to 448. And we all know that we're above 1,000 as we speak. And someone also told me that it's not only rhino, that it's elephants as well, and that currently more than 25,000 elephants are killed each year. That if we continue with this incredible speed that within 10, 15 years we might not have any wild rhino or um, elephants left in the wild. And because of the attention for these iconic species, a lot of people believe that it's only about elephants, rhino and tigers, but it's about <coughs> much more. And I think that most of the people present here know it, but who will defend the little known pangolin? or the organ pipe corals, or the Lemia lobata, that's an orchid. We are dealing with a dramatic increase in the scale and impact of wildlife crime. We are witnessing the complete plundering of our planet, from lungfish to lions, from timber to tigers. And the problem of wildlife trafficking is completely out of control. Our institutional capacity is insufficient to tackle the problem. Time is running out. And that's one of the reasons why I don't understand that this topic was not high on the agenda of last week's EU-Africa summit. It should have been raised by either the EU or the African states, because wildlife trade has an immensely negative impact on their economy. It's a serious threat to the rule of law and essential to the livelihoods of their people. But unfortunately, we are still not taking wildlife trafficking seriously. Despite European recommendations from 2007, member states have not done a lot. And I know that many individuals have worked hard, but how lonely have these people felt when their budgets were constantly being cut and their efforts not rewarded? Many of these lone rangers are present here today, and I would like to thank you for your efforts, and I sincerely hope that times will be changing after today for you as well. But it also means that we should stop just talking about wildlife trafficking and start acting against it. Let's take the London summit of last February as an example. It's great, I must say, that Great Britain raises awareness on the issue, but I hope the next summit in Botswana, Botswana will be more than the talking shop we witnessed last month. We need to capitalize on all those promises that we heard from our leaders the past couple of years. And for politicians, this should be a no-brainer, because our citizens care a lot about the issue. More than 2,000 letters have been sent by European citizens to the Commission. And I don't know what the average response is on public consultations, but I don't expect that so many citizens take action on other subjects. Because this is something that people really care about. They want wildlife to exist in the wild and not just in zoos. And they all want that today will be more than a talking shop. Today is the day that we start to put an end to wildlife crime in Europe. And therefore we need, as the Commissioner also emphasized, an action plan from the Commission, including clear deliverables and timelines. Because apparently, as has been shown, shown in the last couple of years, voluntary recommendations do not motivate member states to actually do something. And member states, please, do not turn this issue into a fundamental fight about Europe and subsidiarity. 
honestly, I don't really care whether it's <coughs> EU, member states, or even local communities that take decisive action on wildlife trafficking. The only thing I do know is that the problem is increasing every day and that the current approach is insufficient. Apparently, an EU recommendation was not sufficient. But maybe there's hope. After France a few months ago, Belgium took action yesterday. I witnessed firsthand an ivory crush of all illegal ivory in Belgium. Something the European Parliament called for in the resolution that I spearheaded and that got adopted this January. And hopefully others will follow. But we need more than just symbolic actions. And I'll name a few. We need to create a specific wildlife trust fund, just as the Commission has done for what? We need member states to set penalties for infringements that actually act as a deterrent against wildlife crime. We have to create a specialized wildlife crime unit within Europol. And we need to strengthen the, the judiciary in the EU. We need enhanced awareness, increased capacity and resources, because prosecutions for wildlife crime have to be conducted to the full extent of the law. And we need a coordinated global response at the highest political level and cooperation between enforcement agencies at international, European and national level. I'd love to close all loopholes that exist today to ensure that the illicit trade will end. Let's work together and let's make our citizens proud. Thank you.